Okay, so we're gonna take a look at this from a newbie perspective. Let's say that you have never textured anything before and you wanna texture this bottle that we see here in front of me. So this is gonna be both demonstration in Mari and Substance Painter because it's kind of similar, but just yes, wanna take a look here at different channels. You're new to texturing and you wanna create this bottle here. And um, the first thing we can talk about is channels and textures and what they are for and what do you do with them so let's take a look here i'm gonna dock here my channels up here uh, this is not gonna be any tutorial about software itself it's gonna be more about the concepts what is a bump map what is a diffuse color and metalness normal map specular roughness and specular color for example this is some of the most common channels we see in texturing. Let's start with the color because that's what um, most people think about when they look at an object, the color. So let's take a look at this color on its own. If I now take my channel here and go to current channel, we can look at this isolated. So you see here, this is essentially the color of the object. So when you have a channel in texturing, the most obvious thing that you texture is the color of the object. So that's kind of straightforward, except we can see here that the metal in my case was also colored. So there's a few different ways to texture metal. And that's something we can come into here with the metalness channel. So a channel here in uh, any object, you might have something called UVs. I'm going to cover UVs later. So. In my case, you can see here, it's a layout of the geometry in UV space. So each of these patches here, we call them patches, is its own 4K texture. This is layout so we can paint easily on top of the object. So you can see here, this uh, patch here corresponds to what we see here over there. So this channel and the patches is related to each other. In my case, this, this object has three UV patches or three UDIMs and you can paint on this. So going back here, so um, we can see here the diffuse color is now, if I go back to the shader mode here and take a look, is what's dictating the actual color. So that's, that's straightforward. But we can see here, there's a lot of other things going on here. We can see that we have, you know, this, kind of like leathery stuff here. So how do we uh, do with that? And uh, that's where bump maps and normal maps come into play. So let's take a look at uh, the bump map first and see how that one looks. So we can see here, you can see this leathery effect here. And as you can see here, when something is brighter, it goes up. And when it's darker, it goes down. I'm gonna jump quickly over to another object so we can uh, dissect this a bit more clearer here. So let's take my plane here. Let's create a, a channel here. Let's say that this is the bump map. We want to make something called a bump. Then the most common thing to uh, do here is to have zero bump is 50% gray. That's uh, the most uh, industry standard way to define a bump map because then you can define both up and down in the map. Let's take a look at that. Let's say that I take a color here that's 50% gray. I'm just gonna drag this one out here, gray. Take medium barrel here, 50% gray. See here, it's scalar data. So scalar is a way to say that this is a, a data-driven channel. More on that in other episodes. Yeah, so imagine that you have a values between zero and, and one here, and the bump map is 0.5 here so it's kind of like on on this line and imagine that you want to have something that's textured like racing from the object then you paint something that's brighter the white will go up to there in the cross section let's say that you want to paint something that's going down into the object and then you would use black and total black will be going down to this value so this is the cross section and let's say that you want to have something that's 0.75 in value. So it's going to half of that. And then you just take my 0.75-ish. That's going to come up to there. So this is kind of like 
have you visualize so yeah so this is something you can define easily when you paint it you can just paint if i do something here let's say that i want to have uh, some something like this so this one will go outside like towards us and uh, like some this one will go inside of the object but uh, related to this is essentially um, normal maps so normal map is essentially a way to have a channel that's red green and blue and it's also some kind of almost like a bump map but it's uh, more advanced than a bump map by taking iris and a low res re uh, geometry and calculate the difference between these two and that creates a normal map and uh, let's actually convert this one into a normal map so if i go here to my layers here this is kind of like photoshop we can apply here something called height as normal so let's create a height as normal layer and this one creates a normal map out of this grayscale and at the moment here we can't see that much but if i go in here we can start to see so if i crank now the bump weight here we can see now that something happens so if i paint now with a, um, a brush here onto the underlying layer that's white you can see here it's i'm gonna have something that's a bit soft we can see here that we start to get colors coming from the different axes so like rgb so it's kind of like a three-dimensional bump map where you can see the sides and if i would paint with something going out here you can see here so white kind of goes out black goes inside so you can see the two differences and this one is then created by this height as normal calculation that you can do in the software red green and blue so you can see the individual channels if i go to red this is how the red channel looks like green this is how the green channel it's kind of a, like a vector and the blue is pointing towards us and red the green is kind of like a side the different sides of the object so the combination of these will be like you can see here when i start to paint we can see it update live here so that's the purpose of normal maps and normal maps is easier for the render engine to handle but it's harder to handle it in texturing because you essentially need to do some operations to create the normal map that's why it's easier to paint black and white and convert it into a normal afterwards so let's go back now to my bottle here and take a look at some other aspects you can clearly see that this one looks like metal and and this one doesn't look like metal so this is some kind of leather and this is clearly metallic so we have this channel called metalness and that's kind of a, a usual way to define what's metallic and what's not so this is also one of these channels or textures that we create when we are using different render engines to dictate what is metal if i will look at uh, this channel it will be like a black and white mask where white would be complete metal and black would be not metal at all so let's take a look at that one so we can see here where i painted white it's gonna become a metal for a shader and black this is where it's leather or glass for example now let's go back to my shader here and take a look we have some other very interesting um, textures here that's specular color and specular roughness okay so specular roughness is one of these textures or channels that's very important because it gives this if you look at when i rotate this bottle a lot of these you know um, imperfections that's not really a bump but even finer than bump this is where we dictate with roughness it's usually if it's black it's totally shiny and if it's white it's very rough surface so let's take a look at that and we can see here it's uh, a bit dark here and that means that it's shiny but where you see here where it's a bit brighter in the value it's gonna get this rougher impression the leather is kind of uniform so you can see here the leather it has 
one kind of roughness with uh, some imperfections within the material itself as well. So this one is similar to a bump almost, but it's not really a bump because it's dictating how broad the sheen of the object is, micro imperfections. So we can demonstrate this by, if I create a, a new shader here and uh, doesn't, I'm not gonna pick up any textures in it. So let's go over here to my standard surface and create a new shader and just play with values so we can see what's happening. So we can now start to play with values here on its own. So we already knew about the color. So that's the, the color of the object. If I set it to red, it's gonna be a red object. We have this specular color of the specular component. That's another channel we can uh, texture. So the specular color. The metalness we already talked about. So if I make this metal to one, you can see now it starts to behave as a metal. So the color of the diffuse channel is picked up and brought into this to the metalness. So we can see here now it looks like a red metal. If I would set this color to white, it would look like a, a silver or a pure met metal. So this one would be like a colored metal. And if I would make it gray, it will be less reflective. So the color of the diffuse when you set it into a metal is brought in to the appearance of the metal, so to speak. But what I want to take a look here now is essentially the roughness. So if I set this to zero you can see now it behaves as a like a mirror if i set this to one it will behave almost like there is very rough material anything in between will will start here to see the difference so if i would uh, do something here let's make a new channel and say and now i want to go back to my uh, shader here again paint some values we can see here what happens onto the surface so this one I'm gonna go and pipe this channel I created into the specular roughness. Okay, so if I now start to paint here with a white paint here, we can see here what starts to happen. So you can see here now, now the object starts to look like it's been very worn and, and like been through some aging and wear and tear and stuff. And this is all now dictated by this roughness channel that I created. Now let's take a look at that channel now, what I painted, and you can see the similarities here into this uh, material here. You can see here, the black is totally shiny, where it's white is gonna be rougher onto the surface. So this is something, this is a scalar channel, and scalar means that it's a value between zero and one, it's more like a, like a data-driven channel specular color that would be if you want to tint the the specular color so let's take a look at that if i go back to my shader as well it's usually specular color is usually white unless you're doing something that's metallic and that can be like a secondary reflection into a metallic so but let's go here to my shader go to my take my specular color and actually tint it towards something and see what happens. It's not so evident there, I guess. If I make this a um, non-metallic, we can start to see the tinted specular component there. So let's make this red. You can see that it actually picks up, rather than being white, it picks up this red sheen. And this is usually something you have white, unless you're doing metallic. When you're texturing for a metal, some metals actually have a different edge color. And so this wouldn't be in, the, when you have a metal, would be the edge color of the metallic. Now let's uh, quickly jump over to uh, Substance Painter and take a look at uh, these concepts there as well. Okay, so here in Substance Painter, we're gonna take a look at the same asset and just uh, click through here the different channels. We have here base color, so that's the the, the color that we saw in the previous lesson here. So it's the same here, you can see the, the metal here has this color onto it. 
and we can see the, here the leather is also we can see here height there is no height information in this asset so yeah it's black but essentially height would be kind of what we saw earlier the bump or a grayscale image where white would be going out and black going in and here we can see the roughness onto these type of uh, materials we can see here the metal here has some imperfections here as well and we can see here if i switch over to the the material we can see that they are picked up as a bit rougher onto the surface when i do this metallic we can see here yes it's the same as in mori black and the white where white would be the metal and we can see here if you have dirt onto a metal it will actually tune down here onto this channel where it's picking up the dirt here's uh, the normal so in this uh, we have defined the normal map on this material so we can see here this uh, metal here doesn't have any imperfections or uh, uh, surface imperfections so it's kind of clean there the leather here you can see it picks up the, the normal map here on to this object as well yeah let's go back to the roughness and uh, paint something here say that i want to override here now the the roughness onto this metal here so you would go in here and make a new layer here and this let's say that you want to paint with only roughness here and, uh, and you can see now it's it's a lot rougher here and uh, likewise you can make it you know more shiny so you can see here now we have these different values if i go in here to my roughness and we can see here this is what i painted and you can turn it on and off so this is the channels here in uh, Substance Painter. So that's another program that's used in uh, the industry. It comes from the games, but now it's more and more going into visual effects where I come from. And that's where I spend most of my time. And yeah, I'm using Mori predominantly, but I also use Painter to define materials and textures as well. So yeah, I'm going to now step back into Mori. We have this metalness this brdf driven so but there's other shaders that define these channels quite differently so just gonna quickly take a look at a, another type of shader and the channels that that requires and that's render man and it's quite different compared to this standard way of metalness driven so let's jump over and take a look at that as well okay so here back in mori the diffuse color or the color of the object will be slightly different and a lot of other components as well so this is very much up to when you texture something you have to take a look at the requirements for the different render engines so if it's a real-time one it's most likely the methods we looked at earlier the metalness driven when this random man shader we have some different way to uh, define a metallic and uh, how that is defined let's take a look here at uh, the current channel and go through the different channels on to this object in we have this random man shader let's go here by let's take the diffuse color first yeah so we can see here uh, out of the bat it looks kind of different so what's happened here so the the thing that's common here is the diffuse color for the leather but you see the metal is totally black and that's because this random shader defines metallic object quite differently and that's why the maps will look different in this case so a metal in uh, real life no real diffuse everything is a reflection so random man defines this by then defining the everything this metal as black and you have other maps and there's two methods to describe metallic objects in random man you have uh, the artistic and the physical driven and my example here is going to be the artistic so that's where we have this specular edge and phase color uh, so let's take a look at what how those two looks like and those two channels so let's take a look at the edge color where we will de define the metallic color of to the object in my case you can see here the metallic color is the face 
and that's facing towards us, the camera, and edge is uh, facing away, 90 degrees away from the camera. So these two colors here, we see here, the, the face color here is um, the neutral here is going to be just neutral uh, onto the leather. And uh, we have these two different colors here. So it's going to be more reflective, more towards white is going to be fully reflective and uh, black is going to be no reflection. So you see here the leather, we have these two colors here. We have uh, the face color is facing towards us and that's less and it's more reflective towards the sides of the object. But you can see here the, the metallic, we have uh, the previous, what we have in the diffuse channel in the previous examples is now essentially dictated in these two channels instead. So we can now um, say here what type of color this metal has and what edge color. So it has more of a yellow tint in the facing towards the sides compared to what's facing towards us. We can take a look at that here on the uh, new shader here. So if I create a new Pixar surface shader, send along Pixar surface and just play with the values, we can see here what this shader uh, needs. So if I'm gonna make a metallic object in Renderman, first we uh, set the diffuse to black. We can see here my artistic colors here onto this shader. So the face color, if I wanna make this like a uh, some kind of uh, copper or bronze. You set the color here on the face and this is essentially facing us here. And uh, if you wanna have something on the edge, that's gonna be uh, targeting that uh, 90 degrees uh, reflection angle. And you can see here now, you can see here what where that's targeted. Opponent, that's essentially a uh, ratio between these two values. So if you want to take some of this edge color, you can over crank it towards, but this is very high level. What you need to remember is a random man defines um, metal as uh, no diffuse color. So black would be in the diffuse color. There's another option here to actually make this physical. And that's, this is where you need to go into index of refraction databases and get uh, values for uh, index of refraction and this uh, secondary extinction coefficient. But that's for another uh, topic. Um, let's go back to our XR surface shader here again and take a look at some of the other channels that's defined. And most of the rest is kind of similar, except we don't have a metalness per se. Okay, so we can see here what's going on. And um, yeah, it's the same thing here, most of it. So let's go back here and go to my current channel and take a look here at the other. We have a, a bump and normal map. So let's take a look at those two. Here we have my bump map. So as you can see here, it's gray. And we can see here that we have some small scratches and stuff. And uh, that's on to uh, this channel here. Let's go to normal map and see if we have something for the normals as well. And we can see here the normal colors so we don't have any scratches in the normals. It's just uh, this bluish color, but on to the leather, it's gonna pick up these uh, surface imperfections. And as in the other examples, the specular roughness is uh, dictating how rough the material is. So if it's black, it's gonna be totally shiny. If it's uh, white towards white, it will be very rough. So if I now here go to, if I wanna paint some surface imperfections onto this again, I can just go here to my specular roughness, go to my layers and uh, start to paint on, uh, on top of this. So I'm just gonna do a, a new layer here. Okay, so let's now, let's say we wanna paint some imperfections onto this metal here. Now we can see here, it's uh, a bit more worn and stuff. So this is how you paint uh, the specular roughness. So, and the roughness is how shiny or how uh, weathered the object is. And bump map is more these type of uh, imperfections, these larger 
imperfections, but still tiny, but uh, it's not as micro faceted like you can see here when you paint the roughness. And the roughness usually is picked up better on a distance. You can see here when you rotate the bottle here, you can see my roughness is picked up pretty well, but anything that's on this bump uh, territory, these smaller imperfections we can see here, it's usually not picked up on a distance, but roughness is easier to pick up on a distance. So that's why the roughness channel is very important for far away objects and bump and normal maps is more when you come close, you see it on a distance, it's not really picked up that good. So yeah, that's a bit about uh, the differences when you define something using another type of shader as well. The basic thing you need to understand is when you texture something, you need to be a bit aware of what type of shading engine you are texturing for. Most of it is kind of, uh, you can uh, just take uh, and translate. For example, it's easy to translate something that's for from Arnold to, for example, a game engine. They have kind of similar like metalness and all of these values. Renderman is a bit of a different because you don't have metalness. It's de defined, the specular component is defined a bit different. So it's a, a bit more involved to take something from Renderman out of the bat into a game engine, for example. Then you need to uh, maybe export some of the masks that's saying where something is metal or not. Okay, so the last thing before we wrap this is Substance Alchemist. So Substance Alchemist is a program that you can create materials. And if I drag one of these presets here into this shader swatch here, we can see here, this is a defined material. And if I now here go up to this guy up here in the corner, 2D, we can see here, this is the materials and the channels from one of the substance materials. Uh, we can see here the base color, that's the kind of like the microfiber normal map. This is as we watched before, the, the bump section, you can zoom in here, we can start to see roughness. This is like a rough material, metallic, because it doesn't have metallic, this material height, you can see here. Ambient occlusion, and that's something that's more game related, opacity as well. Um, but let's take here a uh, like a metallic and see uh, the gold here, for example, to see here if I turn the old material off there, we can see and go back here now to the channels and take a look here. The metallic is now defined here, we can see here. So yeah, that works. And Alchemist is actually a really nice program when you wanna quickly explore materials uh, you can download materials from Substance Source if you are subscribing. So the Substance Source is like a library. So let's say that you want to play here with different materials and uh, play around. You want to mix maybe some gold and uh, some cliff rock here. And we can see here, we can have more, more or less of something here. And we can start to maybe blend the height position. Like so. And now if I go back here and check the channels, we can see here the base color, if I can, can see here. And uh, you can create uh, now tallable maps that you can use either in uh, Mori or you can also use these uh, materials in Substance Paint, for example. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's something about uh, channels here in the Substance Alchemist. And uh, I'm going to come back to Alchemist later on uh, in other tutorials. That's it for this time about channels. And if you want to support my channel, consider subscribing and hit that bell notification so you don't miss anything. See you on the channel. Bye bye.